Hello, YouTube. How we doing today? What's going on, everybody? Hello, and welcome back for some more Days Gone. We're going to kill some hordes tonight. How do you feel about that? Let's say hello to the chat. Melissa S. First one in the chat. Congratulations, ma'am. Um, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, I know it's been a rough day for you. Hopefully, we can provide you some cathartic entertainment. Yeah? Uh, Ryan, also my brother. What's up, man? Boo Boo, the last Boy Scout. Hello and welcome. And Phoenix, newest channel member. Phoenix is here. Good evening. Uh, oh, and Thomas Cole. Hello, Thomas Cole. Welcome in. Hi. Good to have you with us. Uh, oh, and Nightbot is on the clock. Good job, Nightbot. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do tonight, I actually just want to slaughter some fucking hordes, man. Um, I'll show you all some of the stuff that some of the tactics that I use to make it look easy. So that's what we're doing. I need to load up a specific save. Uh, there's one that I have here. I keep this save for um, being able to go do pretty much whatever I want to do. Uh, I recommend that all of you do this, you know, as you're playing through the game, it's a good idea to make save games, like make a hard save at various points, various turning points so that you can go back and play those whenever you want to. For example, I have this save here that's I've completed the game and I only have just a couple of missions left. Like, you know, where's my damn rings? One of the last missions in the game, uh, stuff like that. And I've reset all of the hordes in the ambush camps. So I can pretty much run around and do whatever I want, take on any ambush camp, take on any horde. And I also have all of the weapons unlocked in this playthrough. Uh, on this save file here, I have every single weapon that's available in the game unlocked. Um, probably, I may have misspoken because I don't know that I have the Nero Taser or the probably have the BND 150, but I don't know about the Nero Taser. We probably have those, but I never use those, so they might be there, they might not. Anyway, let's see what we do have. We also need to say hello to Violent Jones. Good evening, Violet. Welcome in. And 8-Bit Terror is here. Hello, 8-Bit Terror. Oh, uh, I I have done. Uh, and I see you there, Tomo Ruin. I don't know if that's the correct way to say that, but I fucking love, I recognize that username. Hello. Uh, nice to uh, meet you in person, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I like that. It, it makes me think of one of the characters from Ghost of Tsushima, uh, the character uh, Tomoe. Was that, is that how it's pronounced? Tomoe? I can't remember now. Anyway, uh, it's just a cool name that I like the way the characters in the game say it. I like the way the voice actors deliver the line when they're saying that name. Uh, so every time I see your name on Reddit, that's what it makes me think of. Oh, shit. We also need to say hello to Larry the Liquidator. Larry, what's up, man? Long time no see. How you been, man? And VA Gaming. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy the voice. I, I try to use it to maximum effect. <laughs> Uh, let's see. You can never remember what save is which. Yeah, I hear you. I, uh, that's why I have it like here. You can see I've made this save file, the one that we're using now for the late game content, is like we're at Lost Lake. It's a beautiful sunrise, and we're pointed toward the gate, ready to rock and roll. Uh, so that's how I remember it in my mind. I have that image there. Uh, let's see. Oh, right on, Melissa S. You're already on top of it. Oh, but, well, uh it's a step forward, at least, you know, perhaps two steps forward. Royal Psycho, what's going on? Watch 90% of the videos. Love your content. Well, thank you. And thank you for joining us this evening. Tomo Ruin, Tom O Ruin, Tom O Ruin. Okay. Neat. One of them is your old job. Oh, shit. Yeah, well, okay. So that's not necessarily a step forward, but it, it's a step, right? Let's go kill some hordes. Um, okay. So I do need to change my loadout. Uh, we are going to equip some hardcore horde killing shit. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Oh, and Ryan, I saw your comment that you're you're doing a current playthrough of Days Gone right now, getting ready for Days Gone Com, uh, Days Gone Anniversary, and I uh, just killed the Death Train horde. Got to get that SMP9. Uh, let's see. Thomas said, uh, starting to play through, not buying anything at the camps except bike stuff. Absolutely, yeah, the bike upgrades. No side content, just main story mission and on survival too. Damn. All right. That should be a lot of fun. Hey. Challenging, but fun. Hey, Blair. Okay, so what I want through? to run for this one, I, I love me some auto shotgun, so we're going to stick with the auto shotgun. I, probably I have the SMP9 in quicks, equipped, so we're going to stick with the SMP9. Uh, and for now, I want to run the MG55. 
maybe not. Maybe we should do something else, right? Like uh, maybe some of the other guns that are good for killing hordes, like the MG45 or the RPD. I actually don't have much experience with the RPD. I never use it um, because I had, on my very first playthrough, I had the uh, MG45 unlocked pretty early game. Uh, I had hit level three at Tucker's camp and had the MG45 with the um, magazine upgrade pretty early. Um, and then I unlocked the MG55 really early also because I was killing every horde as they became available. Um, but I never messed with the RPD. I see the ammo capacity is pretty good. Uh, we should have the magazine upgrade for that. That's probably the upgraded magazine. Uh, 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 we're just going to do the MG55 for now just to get us started. And we may run some different stuff later. Hey, come around more often. All right, so we might as well start with, like, the smaller hordes in the early game. I have something specific in mind that I'd like to do, something I haven't done in a while, actually. Let's do this. We're going to do uh, a couple of the hordes in the Belknap region just to start. <laughs> Larry the Liquidator, I agree, man, I agree. The, uh, the Mount Bailey horde is my least favorite horde in the game. I fucking hate that horde. Uh, it, just because they are so... The, there, there are so few terrain options there, and that's one of the things we'll be talking about this evening is how to maximize the use of the terrain, uh, which I just noticed there was snow when we spawned in here. I don't think I've ever seen snow in the Belknap region. That's weird. I don't think I've ever seen snow in Belknap. All right, so what I want to do is uh, we're actually going to make it night, so we're going to do something a little bit different. Y'all know me, I rarely ever kill hordes at night. In fact, the only horde that I recommend killing at night hey, is the back. sawmill horde. Uh, because then they're all clustered up in their little feeding pit down there at the Nero MMU. Or, I'm sorry, at the, uh, where the Nero death train is parked. In the little pit where all the corpses have fallen out of the train down there. Since they're all clustered up down there at night, I do like to do them at night, but pretty much every other horde in the game... Uh, I generally recommend ambushing them where they sleep. There it is. It was being weird. It wasn't giving me the icon to rest. And now he won't rest. Like, dude, just get in the fucking bed. Wait a minute. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, I see the comment there about using the crossbow bolt with explosive arrow or the crossbow with explosive arrows. Uh, yeah, that that can work for smaller hordes. Uh, I, I tend to get really frustrated with the crossbow. I, I, just not super impressed by the crossbow, honestly. I rarely ever use it for anything other than um, using the incendiary bolts to burn the nest. It's really good for that. Uh oh, Royal Psycho, shout out from Houston. What's up, big Houston? Big H is in the house. Need to say hello to Kaz. Kaz, welcome in. Good evening. Uh, VA Gaming, I don't know, but if you're playing the pirated version of Days Gone, go buy the game. Good to see you. <laughs> okay, just stop and buy. Seriously, it's worth paying for. Okay, we don't All need right. to fill up anything nice here. Come back whenever you need something. Borislav 24-7. What is up, man? What's going on? So I'll tell you what, folks, if you're not already familiar with Borislav 24-7 and his videos, you should be. Because uh, a lot of his videos out there are fan-fucking-tastic videos. If you're really scared of the hordes and you need to know the spots where you can stand in a safe place and uh, take the horde out safely, he's got videos for that. And what we're going to be showing tonight is the tactics that we like to use, the tactics that the pro gamers like to use to make horde killing look easy. All right, let's make a little save game before we go. Yeah, I, I got it. Shit, yeah, all three of the Days Gone greats in the house right now. 8-Bit Terror, host of the Days Gone podcast. Boris Lob 24-7, the horde whisperer himself. And Sponicus Rex, the no shots fired master. So, let's see if we can do this properly. I've actually never done this with this horde. One thing that you can do 
when the hordes are out at night, you can actually sneak into their cave and set up traps whenever you want to. <laughs> Blow his fucking head through the wall. I hear the horde moving around. Did I hear them? I sure thought I did. Let's get to some concealment here. Oh, too high. There we go. Bounty. I would really like to have a suppressor on there. This is this is the primary reason that I never ever use the stun gun. Uh the main reason that I never even bother unlocking it anymore. It fucks up the weapon wheel. It screws up the positioning of the uh pistol, uh, the sidearm and the sidearm suppressor. Uh it makes it Kind of fucky and weird. And honestly, I'd rather just have my pistol suppressor ready. <laughs> That's it. All right, let's see if the horde is moving around anywhere. There they are. Okay, so here's the horde down here at the lake. They're down there getting water. This is where the Pat Jens Lake gets their water from. So we know the horde is not home. So what we're going to do, we're going to go in, plant a whole bunch of fucking bombs inside the cave while they're out and about. Just for fun. We're also going to take a gas can in there. It's not going to do that much damage, but, you know, it'll do some damage. And have I missed saying hello to anyone? Uh, if there's anybody I haven't said hello to yet, pop up in the chat there and I'll try to give you a little shout if I see your name. I got a use for you. So this is the horde, uh, the horde cave, where the Pat Jens Lake horde spawns. This is where they sleep through the day. And uh, they're kind of spread out in this area. So what we're going to do is just put a whole bunch of fucking bombs around. I should do it. I actually don't know exactly where to put them. Because the horde is like really scattered out in here. So we're just going to put like a bunch of them down. Put them all down. Fuck it. Someone who's uh, more meticulous than myself has probably figured out where to place every one of them properly. I'm really just showing this as an example. That it is actually possible to come into their caves while they're not home. We verified that they were down there getting water at their uh, little little lakeside water hole. I sure hope nothing walks in here while we're doing this. Because <laughs> that's going to suck. These all go off at once while we're in here. Now, yes, obviously this is overkill. I doubt it will take all of these. Uh, and I doubt I have them in the correct spots to do maximum damage. We'll just kind of test it and see what happens. <clears throat> you know, there's a breaker out there. Dirt Pirate Adventures. <laughs> Welcome in, Dirt Pirate. <laughs> Ah, what did we have for dinner? Uh, Melissa, we had uh, some stir fry that Claire made. What flavor was that, babe? Sesame. <laughs> Fucker. And that's how you handle breakers. Okay, so what we're going to do... We know that the horde is out and about. We just saw them at their uh, little lakeside water hole. Looks like they have moved on from there. So they'll be either at their feeding site or on the path somewhere between the two. And what we're going to do, we're going to head back up to the uh, Belknap Hot Springs camp here. We're going to rest until morning. 
And what that should do, that should spawn the horde back into their cave where they shelter at during the day. And our proximity mines and our proximity bomb should do some significant damage to the number. Uh, in fact, we'll even set that as our mission. This is the Pat Jen's Lake Horde. That way we'll have a uh, health meter for the horde itself. We'll see how many of them we get. So this is one of those things that really kind of made the game interesting for me in the early hours of myself playing it, realizing that the hordes really do move and exist within the world. They're at different places at different times of the day. So if they're gone from their cave, well, you can just go in there and mine the cave uh, while they're out. Hey there. Look out. All right, y'all ready? Let's. right, I'm going to make a save right here, and then let's rest until morning. Uh, and that should spawn the horde back in their cave. Oh, no, Melissa, I just, I was scanning and I didn't actually read that comment. One sec. Let me scroll back up and I'll have a look at it. <clears throat> the owner of your old job said to contact him if you ever needed or wanted to come back. Oh, right on. Okay. Good luck. Okay. Let's head back. We may need to get close to it to actually spawn the horde in. Bet you're here for your bike, right? Nope. Here. See you, Deke. shotgun favorite weapon in the game okay let's see what happens <laughs> now let's see if we can set off uh, the remote bombs may have gone off we may need to deaden those manually with the button press i don't know if we can do it from this distance okay it's giving me a red symbol down there so it may not have popped them but you can clearly see on the screen there top center <clears throat> you can see we've literally taken out a good 40% of them just by putting a bunch of shit in the bottom of the cave while they weren't home. Okay, and it must have detonated the remote bombs because they're not going off either. I'm still, I'm tapping the button and they're not going off, so they must have already detonated. So now it should be relatively easy to mop up the rest of the horde. Even if you're, uh, you know, not really late in the game, maybe you don't have the MG55, uh, stuff like that. <clears throat> you could, should still be able to do it with just uh, you know, a couple of attractor bombs. I kind of, I like to put them in <clears throat> right there over the over the hill where they're going to come up at. Because if we pop into photo mode, this is another trick you can use. Uh, tab over to lens, max out that field of view. So you have a nice clear view and you can move the camera around. And you can see, right, just about center screen there, the little path where they're going to come up at. And that is where I want to put my attractor bomb. That will get them gathered up right there. And then if you don't move your cursor around too much, if you don't move your targeting reticle around too much, your grenade should go in pretty much the exact same spot. Waiting for the attractor bomb to go off and boom. Put a couple grenades in the exact same spot where they're gathered up and look, we're almost done. Now we just mop up a few stragglers. If you're following my guides, you should have the SMP9 really early. And yeah, look, there's maybe, I think there's probably just one dude stuck somewhere down there. I'll use the auto shotgun for that. Where's he at? Stuck in a wall somewhere? Interesting, I'm actually not seeing... Oh, something just killed him. I have no idea what just killed him. 
there was one wandering around somewhere. So was that an efficient use of our gear? Well, no, of course not. That's not what we were trying to do. Uh, what I was trying to do is simply show that many times you can kill or badly damage the horde without engaging them directly. Just sneak in while they're not home and set traps in their house. Yeah? Cool stuff. All right, so we're going to reload that uh, late game save that I have uh, in Lost Lake with all my gear maxed out and stuff. It's this one here. Because uh, we did waste a lot of gear on that just to kind of show, show what can be done. <clears throat> so, uh, a couple months hmm. ago, we were up by crazy. Joe Schmo, what's up, Joe? How you doing, buddy? I thought maybe the place wasn't paid okay. Over. So let's do equip some uh, different weapons. Hey, Deke, how you been? Let's try the oh, RPD, like, man. I, I Like I was saying, I've never actually used the RPD much. Uh, okay. I've played around with okay. it, of course, but I've never, like, really used it all that much. Hey, come around more often. Easy damn monkey. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got it. You're still in hold. Oh, I like the look of it. It it almost stacks well with the auto shotgun. Uh, the magazines clip into each other just a little, but it almost looks like they're just kind of sitting directly on top of each other. Oh, yeah, uh, Cole, Thomas Cole, that's a very good idea, actually. That might actually be a really good way to deal with the uh, Mount Bailey Horde. Deacon, good to see you. Blair, how's it going? Okay. Uh, yep. Ah, oh, Joe, you just finished up third week of the new job. I'd like to talk to you about that, man. I haven't heard about your newest job. Hey. People use the RPD for the sawmill. Interesting. Uh, I like to use the MG45 is actually one of my favorite weapons in the game. I know, obviously, it's not like the best machine gun or whatever, but I like it. I like the sound of it, and I like the the feel of it. It's It just feels like it's got real recoil. It's It's got that thump every time it fires. Thump, 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 thump. I fucking love the sound of it. Uh, and, of course, the MG55 is higher fire rate and less recoil. The MG55, one of the great things about it is that it's very stable. Uh, when you're firing it, even in full auto, it has fairly low recoil. Uh, so it, it allows you more accuracy. RPD is the second best. Okay, cool. Let's see. What do I want to do next? Let's head up to the Cascades, and we'll do some of these smaller hordes up there in the Cascades. Just for fun. Now, here's just a general pro tip. Uh, it, it amazes me how many people do not know this. And I didn't know it myself at first, obviously, but uh, so many people still don't know this. These fuel cans, these gas pumps like this, you just pull right up to them, and you can fuel up right there at the pump. Uh, and having one right here in O'Leary Mountain, realizing that you have a working fuel pump right there in O'Leary Mountain is just, it's a game changer for me. It's one of the reasons I, I tell people when they're learning the game in the early hours, come back to the O'Leary Mountain safe house regularly. All right, let's check the time. Something else many people don't know, there is actually a clock in game. If you check the upper right-hand corner there, there is a clock on the map that shows you exactly what time it is. This is important to know because the hordes, their locations will change with the time of day. Again, they're they're in their caves during the daytime and they're out of their caves in the evening, generally speaking. And we have one right here at the base of the mountain, uh, O'Leary Mountain here. Interesting note about this horde, you can often find them dead before you even get to them because there is a breaker that spawns in the area and uh, sometimes that breaker will go in and engage the horde before uh, you even get close to them 
Let me see if I can catch this, uh... I gotta reload. See if I can catch this mountain lion in bear trap. Never done that before. Come on, buddy. I see you stalking. Yeah, don't be scared. It's okay. It's all right, kitty. I put a treat down for you. <laughs> Look how it stalks. That's badass. He's gonna dodge this fucking bear trap, isn't he? Come on, buddy. I'm genuinely curious. I don't think I've ever caught one in a bear trap before. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Love it. Wasn't sure if we could do it or not. <laughs> okay, so anyway, the O'Leary Mountain Horde uh, is right here at the base of the hill here. There will sometimes be a breaker that will spawn uh, right outside their cave. And if he goes in and engages the horde, he can kill pretty much all or most of them. And then also within the cave itself, there is a collapsible bridge. And uh, when the bridge collapse, when the horde comes running out, the bridge will fall out from under them and deal damage to the horde. And it is, it is possible for between the breaker and the collapsing bridge to completely eliminate this horde without you ever engaging them. Uh, I see people on the Days Gone subreddit quite often. They'll be like, this horde just won't fucking spawn. The horde won't spawn. Have you checked the horde killer list to see if they're already dead? Well, I didn't fight them. But have you checked the list to see if they're already dead? And quite often it will turn out that they actually have. Uh, the horde has been killed by environmental effects. All right, so let's go see if they're even home. I do not hear them. It looks like they're there. I see red on the mini-map. See what this RPD is all about. Now, the uh, Molotov here is just for light. Now, I'm going to let them come out. See, the bridge has already collapsed. That's interesting. Oh, I do like the RPD. That's fun. Yeah. Basically feels like a beefed up Chicago chopper. What it really feels like when you're firing it. It's got kind of the same sound and the same feel to it, just faster and more powerful. Oh, this dude, I thought he was still alive for a second there, man. Wicked. Oh, they had a wolf in there with them. Dutchy Dutch! Welcome in, Dutch. What's going on, man? Uh, hey, dude, I want to thank you. Uh, I see you're about to drop off to sleep soon. Uh, but while you're here, I want to thank you. Uh, you told us about the Prism Live broadcasting software. Man, that shit's great. Uh, and you were absolutely right. I remember you saying that once you get it set up, it's like super intuitive and easy to use. And uh, that Claire was telling me that as she was set... Basically, exactly the same as OBS. It's basically, so exactly, it's basically the exact... Exactly the same as OBS, which we were using, uh, and uh, but it's more stable than OBS with even more features. Uh, so thank you. I really appreciate that, man. You actually legit helped us out. That has enabled Claire to start uh, multi-streaming on both YouTube and Twitch. That is the key that we needed uh, for her to be able to start doing her multi-streams. Uh, so now she has a, a growing presence on Twitch as well. And we couldn't have done that without your advice. Thank you. Okay, so that's the O'Leary Mountain Horde and the RPD. Uh, now, something else that I wanted to show, uh, you know, this is Horde Killing 101 right here. Uh, if you look around, you can see these muddy, bloody footprints and tracks leading away from this, this cave here. And if you look around, you will very likely be able to identify... Uh, let's see if we can find one. Well, we've got the markers here, so it's kind of in the way. Uh, but you will often see stuff like that near a lake or another cave or a Nero, like the uh, these mass grave sites. The clues that you need for hunting the hordes are right there in the game. And that's something that's always amazed me from my earliest hours in Days Gone. I've always thought it was cool that you could literally go out and track the hordes just like a hunter would track wild game. You you find 
they're where they where they drink you find where they eat you find where they shelter and you can track them in the world i've always thought that was brilliant one of the things i love about this game ivan s welcome in ivan uh, Ivan says, playing this game was really scary for me. Man, the sounds of the hordes when I hear them, so scary. And your most hated zombie is the Screamer, which we actually have one just down the hill from us down there. I just saw her a minute ago. There she is right there off to the left. Uh, yeah, so there's the Screamer. We might go take care of her on the way out. <clears throat> Hi. <laughs> And if you shoot her quickly enough, she is not able to do her scream. Okay, well, we know the Death Train Horde is just right down these tracks here, so let's follow the tracks, and we'll go have some fun with the Death Train Horde. Uh, for many of us, for myself personally, this is the first horde that I, uh, the first horde that I cleared. I think there's going to be marauders up here. I kind of want to go murder them first. I don't want them interfering with our horde kill. I saw that there was movement on the mini-map. I don't actually know if there are marauders here right now, but there is movement on the map. No. Looks like a no. Maybe that was just random. Random movement. I can hear the horde from here, though. Mm. Thomas, I see your comment there. You stopped playing at that, uh, the Reacher horde cave. Uh, Borislav247 and I both have videos for that. And the link's already in the chat there. Uh, that's going to be, that's very likely mine. Uh, and that is one that I show how to clear that mission by using my photo mode trick. Uh, you can pop into photo mode and use that to study the terrain and plan your next set of moves. Uh, so hopefully that will help you out. But yeah, this was the first horde that I ever encountered, or the first horde that I ever killed. Uh, and the thing about this horde, the what made it the first one that I killed, I'll show you here in a second. Let me get in position where we can use photo mode. Um, mm -mm, boom, this should be close enough. Okay, so I like to use photo mode. I tab over to the lens page and max out the field of view and then raise the camera up and you can get a nice 360 degree view of the battlefield. This allows you to identify explosive elements in the field, terrain features in the field. Uh, it allows you to look around and find members of the horde. Like right now, I see several stragglers there. Uh, so we have stragglers to deal with, and I can see the horde up in the uh, up in the box cars up there. You may not be able to see it clearly on your screen, but I can see them there. The reason this was the first horde that I killed, you have this highway going directly and under that train overpass there, and many of the early game missions lead you down this highway. Uh, you have missions for uh, Copeland's camp. You have missions for Tucker's camp that all bring you back and forth up and down this highway. And I remember driving and under that train overpass with the horde just flowing out of the boxcars, dropping down above me uh, and just racing through. They're like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. You know, uh, and eventually I got to the point where I was I was just tired of running from them. And I, I made the decision one day. I was like, fuck it. You guys are mine. Come here. And I just went in and died six or seven times and figured out how to do it. Uh, now, I had already found several of the hidden loot locations at that time. Uh, so I had things like grenades and attractors and attractor bombs. I, I had some fairly good gear at that time. Uh, and like I said, I, I died six or seven times. But that was where I discovered the basics of what it takes to actually clear the hordes. And I'll show you basically how I did it. Uh, my method has not changed much since that very first time. Uh, we did have, I know that I had proximity mines from the hidden loot locations. Uh, I know that I had proximity bombs and I also had attractors and attractor bombs. Uh, and then of course, uh, grenades as well. So I know for sure that I had those items which had been picked up from the hidden loot locations. 
Uh, and if it hasn't already been done, uh, could someone put a link to my complete hidden loot locations video? Uh, we'll drop that in the chat for you. So if you're not... Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, if you're not already familiar with that, it will be in the chat for you shortly. Now, I want to stay as quiet as I can here. I do not want to trigger the rest of the horde. Uh, those were the stragglers. Uh, what happens is... Let me see if I can show you in photo mode here. I don't know if we're close enough. You might be able to see the... No, probably not. Anyway, the boxcars are very crowded. There's so many... Whore, there's so many freaks crammed into those boxcars there that sometimes they will literally shuffle around and just fall out of the boxcar. And then, of course, they'll hit the road and walk around and walk back up into their little resting site there in the boxcars. Uh, so anyway, this is pretty much how I did it the first time. I had proximity mines. And I put a mine uh, right, right here, I think, is where I used to put it. And then I used a flashbang. Because the flashbangs will make noise. They don't do any damage or anything, but they'll make some noise. And you can put a flashbang out here just to get the horde moving. That'll pull them out of the boxcar, get them moving, uh, and then you'll see them kind of coming this way. And I like to put an attractor over there by my bomb that will... Uh, Get a few of them, and then I put another attractor down here. They're still interested in the first one, so we probably just wasted that second one, but it's okay. I have several. And again, we were picking them up from the hidden loot locations. Now, once you get them moving, and you get them gathered up by that fuel truck down there, you get damn near every one of them. Ah, dude, dodge roll. And there's your last one. That was pretty much how I did it the very first time. Uh, the the techniques that I use now <laughs> really haven't changed much. Um, <clears throat> what we can do. Let me go ahead and show you. We'll, I want to load. Um, no, I think what I will actually do is just reset the hordes. Again, this is something else that many of you may not know. Once you have rolled credits on the main story. You roll credits on the main story. And if you reach 100% on the Horde Killer storyline, you can reset jobs. Uh, you have to hit 100% on each storyline, respectively, Hordes, Ambush Camps, and Infestation Zones. You can reset all of them if you like. Uh, but we're going to redo the Hordes right now. So this will respawn both the O'Leary Mountain Horde that we just killed, and it will respawn the Death Train Horde that we just killed. Oh, I need to say hello to Andrew! Andrew Martinez! For the Death Train Horde, I like using the sandbag method. Uh, oh, Borislav got you hooked on that. Okay, I'm actually not familiar with that method. Uh, with that method. Hmm. I need to say hello to Captain Caffeine as well. What's up, Cap? And Deke St. J. Deacon St. John. What's up, man? Welcome in. Welcome in. Good to have y'all here with us this evening. Oh, shit, it respawned us at O'Leary Mountain, but that's okay. Uh, what time is it? It is 3.07 p.m., so since it is uh, past noon, I'm going to go ahead and camp, make it first light. My favorite way to clear the hordes is to ambush them where they sleep first thing in the morning. Looks like those are so what we're going to do is we're going to camp. Since it's only 3 p.m. right now, the first rest cycle will make it evening we'll rest one more time and that will make it morning <sighs> I was ready to go back at it. Ah, i also need to say hello to muhammad secret assassin hello muhammad welcome in all right so now it's nighttime we'll rest one more time and this will make it early morning and have i missed saying hello to anyone I do sincerely apologize. The chat's moving really quick, and I, I am kind of focused on sharing uh, sharing my favorite horde-killing tactics with you. Hey, babe. Would... Okay, she must be All taking right. care of something. Okay, let's go. I was going to see if she'd bring me some whiskey. All right, it is now first thing in the morning. So we're going to head back out, go back down to the death train horde, and we'll show you some alternate methods for clearing that horde effectively. 
And you know, one thing I'd like to point out here, really, there is no right or wrong way to do this. What I'm showing is the tactics that the pro gamers like to use to make all of the hordes look easy. Yeah, there's that mountain lion that we caught in the bear trap earlier. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't stop driving all squirrely. Let's see, I'm gonna get off track here if I'm not careful. One more thing. When they left, yes, Cope, they we know. Calm down. We know. Shotguns. Watch yourself. Jesus, go tactical stop on the tree. I do what I can. Cope out. Okay, I'm sorry guys, I'm driving like shit right now. I'm trying to look at the chat and drive. I know better. Texting and driving kills. Don't text and drive, kids. Seriously, don't text and drive. Okay, so <clears throat> there are a million and one different ways to do this. Uh, you have so many different things available to you here. Like, for example, you have these explosive barrels here. You have these explosive boxes over here. Uh, and then you also have this big-ass truck that we just used effectively a moment ago. So there's there's tons of different ways to do this. Uh, and I actually, I'm not familiar with uh, Borislav 24-7's sandbag method. I guess I haven't seen that video yet. Uh, but I mean, that just, again, goes to, goes to say that there's tons of different ways to do this. There's no right or wrong way. There's the way that worked for you. And that's what matters. Scan in the chat real quick before we start going. Okay, let's see. I don't really know what I want to do this time. I just want to do it a little bit different. We may actually just kick the hornet's nest, get their attention, and run them past some of those explosive elements. Hey, wake up. I see one coming up behind me. Okay, we've got their attention. We've got some behind us here. Let's bring them with us. So what we're going to do, I'm going to kind of snake around this just to get them running past it. And we only got a few of them, so I'm actually going to kite them around a bit more. That got a few of them. I'm going to run them past some of these barrels. Look, that actually did take quite a few of them. I missed! Dang it, Junior. So, again, that's there's thousand and what thousand and one ways to do it. If one thing doesn't work, try something different. We're going to continue kiting them around and just bring them right back past this barrel. There we go. Try not to miss that time. Okay, and there's another barrel right over here. Now, if things start to feel hectic, if you start to feel pressured, pop into photo mode. Tab over to the lens, max out the field of view, raise the camera up, and you can literally look around with a bird's eye view of the entire battlefield. And check this out. We can see I was starting to feel a little bit pressured, like, oh, shit, we missed that shot. We, we didn't run them by the truck properly, blah, blah, blah. You know, we're kind of messing it up. Now I can see there's only a few of them left. That right there, that right there take some of the pressure off, right? So while we're in photo mode, we see that there's only a few left. We can also look around and see where we want to take them. Right down the side of this pile of corpses here, we want to lead them around to the left and lead them around this other barrel. Let's say I fuck that up too, all right? No worries. I see two more explosive boxes off in the distance. So even if I make a mistake here and I failed to make good use of this barrel, I'm just going to keep going and take them over there to those two boxes. So either way, either way, even if I screw this up, we have a backup plan ready. And we achieved that by using photo mode. You can stop the action right where you're at, literally stop the horde dead in their tracks, and look around and plan your next moves. All right. 
Now, I personally like to orient the camera properly again before we take off. Because, like, let's just say, for example, I left the camera positioned this way, which actually that's pretty cool. I think I may take a shot of that. Click. Anyway, uh, if you leave the camera positioned this way and you exit photo mode, it's going to exit photo mode with the camera looking back. I do like to properly orient the camera before we go back into the action. It, it just helps keep my head straight while I'm in motion. There we go. Now we're back in motion. And I'm going to try to lead a couple of them right past this barrel. Boop. Uh, I was going to see if you'd bring me some whiskey. Outstanding. Okay. And then there can't, be, <laughs> there can't be many more left. In fact, we have two. Uh, and again, I fucked it up. So we're going to run him past this little box here. Come on, buddy. Don't be scared. It's just a little box. And that got both of them. There you go. Death Train Horde. Done deal. Sloppy as fuck. Inefficient as fuck. But did we take any damage? Yeah, oh, we may have taken a little bit of damage there. And hell, I may have hurt myself on some of those explosives. But there was very little pressure. Even though it was sloppy and hectic and inefficient, we got them. And we used barely, I, I used what, a few bullets? Yeah, I can go hit my saddlebags now and refill my weapon completely. And the bullets that we used, the handful of bullets that we used, got them right back. It's that's how it's done. That's the kind of stuff right there that makes it look easy. Now, I didn't make it look easy that time, but by using those tactics, that is how we achieve that. Ah, all right. I'm being told that Thomas has a question. Ah, is it the last comment there? The why only 2,500? That is an easy one to answer. That's because I'm on New Game Plus. Deacon is currently maxed out, and it's not actually giving us any XP. So if you're on New Game Plus... Everything you do will show uh, 2,000 of 2,500 for some reason. Uh, but also, if you are not maxed out, sometimes you may see, I, I see this question on the subreddit all the time, uh, where somebody will say, hey, I killed this horde and it showed me I only got like 40% uh, XP or whatever. That has nothing to do with your performance. Uh, that's telling you that the amount of experience points you were awarded put you 40% closer to your next skill point. It's nothing to do with performance. It's not because you were sloppy killing the horde. It's not because you didn't get enough headshots. It has nothing to do with it. Uh, in fact, I can demonstrate. I may be able to demonstrate better. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I can show you where it is. If you look kind of top center uh, where it says 0% and 0 of 891,000, uh, that is... That right there is uh, where it shows... I'm sorry, I just skipped off of it. That is where it shows you the percentage of XP you were awarded and how close you are to your next skill point. It shows you exactly how much XP you have and how close you are to the next skill point. And it's represented as a percentage, uh, which that is exactly how it works. Whenever you clear a mission or kill a horde or anything like that, and those pop-up cards come up with a percentage on them, it's, it's just letting you know how much XP you were awarded. And it has nothing to do with your actual performance, uh, whether you did well or did not do well. Uh, and how I miss saying hello to anyone. Oh, yeah, Borslav 24-7 on PC. You have to actually engage and disengage the clutch so that you can walk the bike to move it quietly. That's another one I see on the Days Gone subreddit all the time. It's like, I can't drive the fucking bike. This bike fucking sucks. I hate the bike in Days Gone. I can't make it go. It's broken. Have you tried caps lock? <laughs> so many times it's like, oh, I didn't know. Like, yeah, it's it, it really is a thing. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. So uh, we can do all kinds of stuff. Let's take a look at some of the other hordes in the area. Uh, we have just cleared the death train horde. What is, let's do the horse lake horde. And that's actually one I get mixed up all the time because this is Horse Lake. Isn't this like the Horse Lake Nero checkpoint? Yeah, see, this is the Horse Lake Nero checkpoint. And this is Horse Lake right here. I believe this is Horse Lake. Uh, no, I guess it may be this one. This may be Horse Lake now that I think of it. But this is the Horse Lake Nero checkpoint. So I get them mixed up sometimes. You have the Death Train Horde here and the Horse Lake Horde uh, right beside each other. And uh, I do sometimes get the two of them confused. I wonder if it's possible to combine the two of them. 
do 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 let's reset hordes and see if we can combine these two. I'm really curious now. Uh, it is possible to combine some of the hordes into much larger hordes. Um, there's uh, D Marlo 310 has a video uh, that he put out a while back, uh, quite a while back. But what he did was he discovered that the Iron Butte horde will chase you across the entire map of the game. The Iron Butte Horde is the only horde in the game that will chase you relentlessly across the entire map. That's these guys over here. It is a main story mission horde, uh, but you can actually go engage them without starting that story mission. Um, so this horde will follow you everywhere. And what he did was he took the Iron Butte Horde and made, him, made them follow him. They followed him all the way over to the sawmill. And he, he was able to keep them grouped up pretty well. So most of the two hordes combined. And it's a massive, like, you know, 800 freakers strong. Because there's 500 in this horde in the sawmill and 300 in the Iron Butte. Uh, and between the two, it was something like he probably killed at least 700. You know, he managed to keep most of them grouped up. It's, it's fucking nuts that you can do stuff like that. Uh, but as far as I know, the Iron Butte horde is the only one that will follow you across the entire map. Okay, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning, so it's early enough. What I want to do, we're going to go get their attention, see if we can get them to follow us to the Death Train Horde. I don't know if it's possible or not. I don't know how far this horde will follow you. Most of the hordes have a maximum limit where if you get far enough away from their spawn point, they'll just lose interest uh, and they'll stop chasing you. Oh, Violet. Yeah, me too. Um, you know, you, you tend to learn what works and just use that over and over. But that's one of the things that I love so much about Days Gone. It's one of the things that initially made me fall in love with the game. Creative freedom. So few games give you anything approaching actual creative freedom with how you do things in the game. So many games require you to do things a very specific way. Uh, it's like some of the missions, and this is just, just an example. It's not a dig or anything. It's just an example. Like Red Dead Redemption. Uh, many of those missions, they require you to complete them in a very specific manner. Uh, and that feels very limiting to me. It feels very restrictive to me. I love it when a game actually gives you options and creative freedom, allowing you to do things different ways, however it works for you, whatever you like to do. It really means a lot to me. And in fact, in my first interview with the Days Gone podcast, uh, Claire asked me, you know, what is, I don't recall the specific question, but it was basically, what do you love about Days Gone? You know, what's your favorite thing about Days Gone? My answer was immediately creative freedom. All right, let's see if we can get this horde's attention. If they're even home. Not hearing them. Dang it, Junior, they're not even home. All right, so we'll do another little uh, pro tip here. There are several ways to correct a horde that won't spawn in. First thing we're going to try, I'm actually going to move back a little ways. I don't, want, <clears throat> I don't want to be right here at the mouth of the cave. So we're going to back up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is just make a save game right here. Save your game. See that it's done saving. We're going to load the game right here. And we're going to sip on some whiskey. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Do not think they are home. I do not have the red on the minimap. Ah, you rat bastards. All right, whatever. So here's another trick for getting a horde to spawn in. We have a save game here. So what we're going to do is we're going to travel to a different map region. We're going to completely load a totally different map region, make a save game there, load our game there, and then we'll go back over and see if the horde has spawned in properly. Yeah, Thomas, I, uh, I wish I could answer your question, but I honestly don't know, man. I have legit 
just lost count. I don't know how many actual playthroughs I have. I've also spent a lot of time just resetting the hordes, as I've shown earlier, how you can reset the hordes from the main menu. Uh, I've done tons and tons and tons of that. Uh, and a lot of just, like, playing to a specific point just to make content. We've done a lot of that as well. Um, so, I, man, I really don't know. Uh, here in a second, I'll show you how many hours I have. We can at least do that. Uh, all right, so I've made a save here. We fast-traveled to another region. We made a save. Now we're going to load that save. And then we'll go back over and check it out. All right, Ryan, you're on your third. Yeah. I mean, we, we have members of the community that are, yeah, like shit, there's Captain Caffeine, 30 plus. We have members of the community are who are at playthrough number 49 and about to start number 50. Jeez, there's another guy on the Days Gone subreddit. I can't recall now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, God, what is he saying he's got? 50 or 60 now? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, I don't remember now either. Uh, and let's see. Yeah, Gomer Black Magic is approaching 50. And I saw the real question, how many of your playthroughs have been off stream, actually? Yeah, not many for me. Uh, I mean, I, I I know I had a good five, six hundred hours in the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, five, six hundred hours before I even started, like, making content. Interesting. All right. Mm, let's go back and see. Damn, Violet, you're at 20 plus? I didn't realize. Yeah, I didn't realize you had that many playthroughs on this one. Yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah, Cap, that's one of my favorite things, too. That should be it. All right, so... I am going to go ahead and camp. We'll make it first light. And then we'll go down there and check on the horde, see if they're home. I'm just going to grab some shot. Eye. Hmm. So you have a document running of uh, the different playthroughs you've done. Interesting. I kind of wish I had been keeping count, actually. All right, one more to make it first light. It's like Boozer says, I hear a bunk calling my name. Yeah, it'd be cool to see like a spreadsheet of it. Yeah, the only spreadsheet I have, uh, I made a long time ago. It's each of the hidden loot locations and what can be acquired at each location. So, like, if I'm low on attractor bombs, I'll be like, oh, okay, I know I can go to this specific hidden loot location uh, for this specific item. Okay, so we still have the Horse Lake Horde selected as our current mission. Let's go see if they're behaving properly. But uh, I almost forgot. Let's go to the main menu here, to the actual PlayStation menu. Uh, in on PlayStation, I have 1,455 hours. And on uh, shit, on PC, I, I think it was eight or 900 last time I checked. Um, so, yeah, uh, 1,455 plus, like, let's say 800 just for fun. Uh, that's a lot. Wrong button. <laughs> Interesting. I believe there is some drama on the Days Gone subreddit for some reason. Not 
sure what's going on there. Hello. Do not pet the rager bears. won't follow you very far. In fact, I wonder if they're even following us now. Hmm. Probably not. Davall Patel, welcome in as a new channel member. Thank you. Thank you for joining as a member. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, right in time, too. Hey, it looks like you just helped us spawn in this horde that was misbehaving. I believe they're actually going to be home this time. We have red on the minimap. Someone is aware of me because I'm not able to save my game. So let me try to get some concealment here. Let me see if someone is chasing us. I want to make sure we don't have anyone else around when we engage this horde. Actually, I don't see anybody. Still not allowing me to make a save game here. That generally means that someone is aware of you. There's nobody around. Huh. Alright, whatever. Let's go ahead and... I'm going to set this horde as our marker. So I don't get lost. And we're going to see if we can lead this horde down there to them. That ought to get their attention. Alright. Now, if you want to lead a horde around, one way to do it is to kind of drive in like a swervy serpentine pattern like this. That way you're not making too much forward momentum and the horde will stay. Oh, fucking hell. Did y'all see that? Goddamn sniper ambush, man. <laughs> oh, that's rotten. Oh, okay. So we've just got shot off the bike by a sniper ambush and we've got a horde hot on our tail. What are we going to do? Okay. I wonder if it was the sniper ambush that was aware of me. Because, like, they're able to 360 no-scope you from a mile, 10 miles away. So they may have zeroed in on me and that weren't registering on my mini-map yet. So, <laughs> so what we're going to do... No, not a rock, Deacon St. John. A smoke bomb. That will take some of the horde off of me. I need to... Actually, I really need to heal. Let's do that real quick, because we're about to take another hit, I'm sure. Okay, now we can get... We can interrupt this sniper's line of sight. We are now safe from the sniper. Let's see if we can deal with the horde real quick. The remaining members of the horde have already forgotten us. Okay. So now we've interrupted line of sight for the sniper. Let's see if we can get a shot on him. Uh, you feel <laughs> there we go. Headshot with a full auto rifle. Look at these guys. What is this? Another Marauder ambush down there? This is one of the things about Days Gone, man. The world comes for you. We were trying to do one very specific thing. Vagrants. 
have this in now we're doing lots of other things but again i'm using the trees as cover here mostly just to interrupt line of sight This weapon is good, but not very accurate, unfortunately. <laughs> that was the last guy in the horde. Oh, my goodness. All right, now let's deal with these other marauders. I hear someone closer to me. Oh, okay, there we go. All right, so we're going to switch to something a little more accurate. Boop, headshot. They're down, they're down. Boop, headshot. Oh, we didn't get a headshot that time. Maybe? There we go. There's another headshot. I love the SMP9. That right there is the main reason for trying to get the SMP9 unlocked as early as you possibly can. All right. So what we're going to do, let me see if I have a save from, I think this will be right before we rolled up on the horde or perhaps even where we, uh, perhaps even where we saved our game before starting with this whole mess. Okay, let's see if the horde's on. I think this is the save where they had not spawned in properly. Yep. Damn. All right, whatever. <sighs> All right, so I'll tell you what. Let's go do something entirely different because this horde is misbehaving and we just killed them once. So we'll go do something entirely different. How about these guys down here? I actually... No, this is... I see. You know, I never really noticed that. I don't recall ever noticing that there are two completely separate hordes that drink from this lake. You have both the Grotto Caves horde and the guys we were just engaging, the Horse Lake horde. Both of them right there. That's weird. Uh, did I miss saying hi to somebody? Uh, James, James Smith, welcome in. What's up, man? Only thing to do, the good old roly-poly, the ancient art of roly-poly. <laughs> yeah, let's go do the Grotto Caves Horde. That one's fun. I like that one. One of the bigger hordes in this area. I don't recall exactly how big it is. Hell, it may even be the biggest horde in the Cascades. I don't recall now. Current time is 9.03 in the a.m., so it's nice and early. We can do this pretty easily, I think. Go ahead and grab some fuel. Uh, here we go. Never gets old. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Good. Okay, we're gonna do these guys this time. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Hmm, Grotto is 75, okay. Which is pretty big for this area for early game. <laughs> no, that's uh, if these guys are home, we'll know shortly. Scott, Scott Nagy. Well, is it Nagy or Nagy? I, I, I would hate mispronouncing that. Hi, Scott. It's hard to mispronounce Scott. They're not home. All right. So we know what to do. If the horde's not home, and you know they should be, we're going to fast travel to another region, save our game, load our game, come back, should be okay. It's a bit frustrating having to do this regularly, but it sh should probably work. <laughs> mm 
Violet, were they smoking uh, strawberry cough? Okay, so we're here. Make a save game. Yeah, uh, Thomas, you're correct. They are pretty far inside the cave, but once you actually enter the cave, you should you should hear the audio uh, of the horde growling and stuff. So if you don't hear that, they're not home. Okay, so let's load that game, and then we'll run back and try again. At least we have a fast travel point really close because we have that Nero checkpoint there. I, I love the individual comment there, Thomas. Uh, with no context, it just says, go deeper. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's the fuel cam. We're going to top off the bike. Go. Probably go ahead and wait until morning. Yeah, it's 5.30 p.m. right now. So we'll use this uh, narrow checkpoint here to camp until... <laughs> I'm sorry. I just realized there's a fuel can laying right beside the bike, and we just ran over there to pick one up. Brain. I'm good at killing. I'm good at killing hordes, but I never pretended to be smart. <laughs> That's it. All right. Oh, I'm just gonna close my eyes for a bit. The first pronunciation. Okay, cool. Okay. Learning stuff from the chat, huh, Cap? Okay, so that should make it uh, nighttime, I think. Yep. And now we're going to do one more, which will make it first light. I'm just going to grab some shot eye. Oh, dude, I'm on top chat. What a, what a fool. I just said I can't pretend to be smart. Uh, folks, make sure that you are on live chat or all messages, wh whichever it happens to be on the platform you are using. Uh, YouTube likes to limit comments uh, for some reason if you're on top chat. So to prevent that, make sure you are instead on live chat or all messages. Then you can actually see all of the messages in the chat. Let's go try again. See if they're home. <laughs> smash the like button. But don't smash the taint. Taint punch. I don't know anything about that. Can we go this way? I know. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is a shortcut. It's funny. It's like the map shows you this whole fucky long way to get there. It's like, dude, it's it's right. There's just connect the dots like right there. It's, it's, it's right there. Like, seriously, just right here. See? <laughs> now the map's like, oh, yeah, like, it's just right there, isn't it? All right, another pro tip here. Do park the bike in a, both in a location and in an orientation, which allows you to make a quick getaway. You want to be able to sometimes get back to the bike quickly and easily so you can come out here and hit the saddlebags. And you want to also have it pointed in a direction where you can hop on and go if you need to uh, get away from the horde in a hurry. Now, let's find out if they're home. See, uh, Thomas, this is what I'm talking about. I can already hear them. We haven't even hit the wooden steps yet. I can hear the horde. So if you've gone off into their cave just a little ways and you don't get the audio cue, they're not home. Y'all should be able to hear that by now. Yeah, which one is that, Thomas? The the one that specifically says that? Because I remember I, I've had that theory for a long time, and I don't recall if I got it from actual intel in the game. Is it the one uh, in here? 
Oh, Borslav heading out. All right, brother. Hey, thank you for popping in, man. It's it's always good to have you here when we're uh, playing Days Gone and killing hordes, man. Always appreciate you popping in, buddy. Uh, you know what? Uh, I actually do have a video dropping soon. I, I reckon we'll probably drop it uh, Monday afternoon. Um, sometime around lunchtime uh, here in Mountain Time. So probably something like 11.30 or so uh, Mountain Time on Monday. Uh, I have I have compiled basically everything that I could think of that will help you kill hordes. Pretty much some of the stuff that we're showing tonight will be showcased in there, and then all of the details in between. Uh, it is everything you need to know to make horde killing look easy. I've put that together for the community. Uh, uh, actually, myself and 8-Bit Terror. 8-Bit Terror is my editor, and we also hired a pro video editor for this one. Uh, I don't know if he's in the chat tonight, uh, but Stickman, here's your shout-out. Hey, bud. Uh, so yeah, we've put together a massive fucking video. It's one of the biggest videos I've ever made. And it is everything that Sponicus Rex knows about killing hordes. Uh, everything that I felt I should share with you to make it look easy. And that'll be dropping again, probably around 1130 Mountain Time on Monday. So you guys be looking out for it. Ooh, exciting, says Ian. Ian, did I say hi to you? Welcome in, bud. All right, so this one is actually pretty easy. We're going to use photo mode again. Uh, this is how I like to just kind of get a view of the terrain and our options. Uh, so we're going to photo mode. I may not be close enough. I may have to move in a little bit further. But you can see this pit down in the middle here. We are going to have to go in a bit closer. We sneak in here as quiet as we can. Sneaky sneak. Okay, now we'll try again. There we go. So you can see the horde is pretty well clustered up down there in this pit. I don't know how well you can see it. It is fairly dark in there. Uh, so I'm not sure how well it's translating on your screen. But <clears throat> right down there in that pit. So one of the easiest ways to get them, what I like to do, if you are using my Hidden Loot Locations videos, you will already have access to proximity mines and things of that nature. So what you do is you study their path. Where are they going to come up from? Well, their only option here, I'll give us a little more light. Their only option at first is to come up from this tunnel right here. And if you allow them to come up from this tunnel, they will flank you. So I like to set at least one bomb here to prevent them from flanking me as easily. They're still going to run up and swarm around that bomb. A few of them will get past it but that will stop the front ranks. So what I'll do is I'll start with an attractor bomb. Since they're already fairly well clustered up, you don't need to start with an attractor to pull them in. The attractor bomb will pull them in and then pop. Now, you can use shoulder swap with prone items as well. On PlayStation, that's X. You tap X and he'll shoulder swap to aim around the corner for you. So I'm going to drop this attractor bomb right there in the pit. And then you can also throw, like, maybe a grenade in there as well on the same path if you don't move your targeting reticle. <laughs> cool. Okay, so now they're going to start swarming up. And that's okay. We want them to do that. We want them to try their luck. Let's give them a target. I'm just making some noise so they'll come at us. They're going to come up here, and they're going to hit this... Uh, well, actually, let me show you exactly what I'm doing. If you notice in photo mode, what I'm doing here... I, I'm aimed at that side tunnel where we sat our proximity mine. There is also the primary tunnel, right? Ah, look, we have some there. You can see them off in the distance now. Uh, give us a open up the aperture so you can see more clearly. Uh, you can see there are a couple of them coming up. They've climbed up the ledge there. So there's some coming down this path to the left. There will also be some coming in this path to the right here. The way I have currently positioned myself, I will be, I, I have full line of fire on both tunnels. As they come around this corner, I am already set to open fire no matter which tunnel they come down. See, that one came in from the left. Now here they are coming in from both directions and I'm able to open fire and maintain line of fire 
on both tunnels from one position. Done. That's the kind of shit that makes horde killing look easy. Use your tools. Use your throwables. Use the terrain. All of those all of those factor in. Um, and even using things like the shoulder swap, just so you can throw items around a corner. It's, it's all there, man. Uh, all of those tips will be shown in my ultimate guide to horde killing. That'll be dropping on Monday. So guys, I'll tell you, if you, if you struggle with the hordes, Borislav 24-7 has great videos out there that teach people the safe spots, where you can stand in a safe spot and take out the horde. Uh, and that's an excellent resource for the community. This video that I'm releasing on Monday, the intent of it is a little bit different. The intent there is to teach you the tactics that make all of the hordes easy. Rado Caves Horde, done deal. I hear a reacher somewhere. Yeah, the Molotovs do not do much damage. I see your comment there. Uh, Molotovs don't do much damage by themselves, uh, but I also like to use Molotovs in the caves just for light. Uh, one of the things that I love about the game, I'm sure y'all saw it, when I opened fire on the horde as they were coming up the tunnel, you see the muzzle flash traveling down the tunnel. I, I love that effect. It's another one of my favorite things about fighting the hordes in Days Gone. But it can be very disorienting. Uh, and the caves are really dark. It's hard to see. So what I will do sometimes, I'll actually put a Molotov, uh, and actually this tip came from Lucas Knight on the Days Gone subreddit. Uh, I, can't, uh, I can't think of his name. Yeah, it's P-R-A-Q-O-O-N, Pracoon, I think is his username on subreddit. Yeah, uh, but he does, uh, he showed me that one time where he had done, I think it was the White King mine where he threw a Molotov in there just for light. And I was like, well, shit, I never thought of that. I always try to use them for doing damage. But, you know, as we all know, the m small Molotovs, your regular Molotovs, they don't do much damage uh, by themselves. But they are an excellent light source. Got it. And there's wolves. Wait, what? You can... Th oh, you can throw a Molotov on yourself. <laughs> That's fucking classic. <laughs> like, yeah, all right, it's going to hurt me, but I'm going to take some of you with me. Uh, <laughs> uh, I hope you guys were watching earlier when that sniper shot us off of our bike. Did you see how I got the horde off of me? I used a smoke bomb. Drop a smoke bomb at your feet. It doesn't deal any damage to you, but it will prevent the horde from following you for a second and allow you to get some distance. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, there's a wolf. Ah, you old bastard. All right. I suck at these. Okay, we managed to get that one. I miss those all the time. I really suck at those timed button press events. What else you got? Got some more wolves? They usually bring friends. No? Maybe the Reacher ate his friends. I see the minimap is showing there's someone like basically right on top of us. I don't see anybody. All right, so let's let's go kill some more hordes, man. Um, we'll take a look at the map and see where else we want to go. <laughs> yeah, Thomas, like, uh, you see my dumbass? I'd just rather set myself on fire. <laughs> People do forget about the smoke bombs. Uh, they underestimate the smoke bombs quite often. Uh, smoke bombs and flashbangs. Let's see. Actually, I'm kind of hoping there is another wolf so I can show you what the uh, smoke bombs do to wolves. Nothing to do with horde killing, but still fun. Okay, that's just a freaker. All right, well, if we come across any more wolves or mountain lions or runners, I will show you another use for smoke bombs.
Yeah, just setting yourself on fire, help when there's no hordes around? Because I do that, too. Hmm. Let's actually set a destination. Who are we going after? These guys. This ought to work. Yeah, I guess it'll keep you warm on those cold Oregon nights. Deer. I wonder if smoke bombs do anything to the deer. <laughs> Dirt Pirate says, I'm pretty good at setting myself on fire when there's nothing around. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Me too. No, uh -uh, no, you don't, homie. Shit. All right, so if you can interrupt line of sight. Oh, there we go. The best way to deal with these roadside snipers, interrupt line of sight as quickly as you can. Get off the bike, get to cover, interrupt that line of sight. Now, another pro tip here for the roadside snipers. You can see that the sniper is hidden in the... Well, you can't see him now because he's turned his, scope off, uh, turned his laser sight off. Uh, but... You cannot see him so well. What you can see is the wooden platform. Can we? We can zoom it in. There we go. Yeah. So using photo mode, we can see the sniper up there, but you can see that wooden platform that he's standing on, the deer blind that he's standing on. It only takes like two shots to get that out from an under him. One. Like that, huh? that is an instant kill every time. And another good thing about using the... Another good thing about shooting that out from an under them is... Uh, <laughs> I just shot the top... I just scalped that chick. Wow. We literally shot the top of her head off. It didn't count as a headshot kill, but pretty wicked anyway. Uh, so anyway... You shoot the platform out from and under the sniper. And what that does is it ensures you can get the loot from him. Because sometimes, just sometimes, you kill them up there on that platform and they're just stuck up there. You can never get up there to get that loot. Because once you have killed that sniper, you can no longer destroy the platform. Uh, so yeah, just shoot the platform out from and under him. All right, let's go after this next horde. Hmm, that is interesting, Violet. Uh, I'd rather use, like, a grenade or something and see if we can get the MG45 off of that dude. Yeah, don't give her a chance to scream. Runners. We have runners. All right, so let me show you another use for the smoke bombs. Check this shit out. They will actually stun them, and they'll start vomiting on the ground. Wrong button. Hang on. You can literally see this fool is throwing up on the ground from the smoke bombs. This works on wolves, runners, and mountain lions. It will stun them, stop them dead in their tracks, and cause them to hunch over and start vomiting. where you can kill them mercilessly. One of my favorite uses for smoke bombs. I have no idea. I hear, I'm hearing some heavy gunfire. I just heard like a pipe bomb or something go off. I have no idea what's going on. There is some serious action going on somewhere nearby. Yeah, yeah, that's that's Thomas. That's what I was talking about. There is a one of the guards in Copeland's camp has the MG45, and we've had multiple people report that they found that dude dead, and you can actually pick up his MG45. You can have an MG45 early, early in the game. I don't know of any way to duplicate it, though. I don't know any way to reliably make that happen. <laughs> yeah, Melissa, there's always a silver lining. At least you won't be hung over tomorrow. There is that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go uh, play around with this other horde here. 
if they're home. We have the audio, so they are home. So what I'd like to do, let's just see if we can do this properly. <clears throat> Hopefully I didn't just get their attention just now. We may have. So there's a nice little ledge right up here. And one thing that I really like to do, I'll get like a good angle. No, I can't really see the opening of the cave. This ought to work right here where we can see the opening of the cave. What I'm going to do, not sure exactly how well this is going to work, but we're just demonstrating tactics. Uh, again, shoulder swap works with throwables. So we're going to throw it this direction over the other shoulder. And I want this horde to come out to the mouth of their cave here. Let's see if we can draw the whole horde out. And it's a bit redundant here because we have a really good angle. But once you get some of them grouped up, you can actually use a smoke bomb to stun them. And it will stun nearly the entire group down there. So even the ones that want to start moving, some of them will be stunned by that smoke bomb. All right, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to pop another smoke bomb. They're about to start coming up here. See how it stops them dead in their tracks? It'll give you a little time. You see that? Hold control. That's one of the tactics that I show in my ultimate guide to horde killing that will be releasing Monday at 1130 Mountain Time. Little things like that. Little things that I've picked up through thousands of hours of gameplay. Crowd control. <laughs> yeah, Melissa, don't be spending uh, the extra money. <laughs> Hang on to your money for a little while till you get that next job lined up. I know that's got to be so stressful right now. Bounties. Juan, Juan Diaz, welcome. Welcome in, man. Good to have you here with us. We're just kind of running around, killing some hordes, showing some of the tactics uh, that will be... Some of the tactics that will be demonstrated in my upcoming Ultimate Guide to Horde Killing. Okay, now we've used a lot of supplies and stuff. So what I, what I think I'm actually going to do is just load that base save that I have where everything is available. And we'll come back in with a virtually full inventory. Sweet Ellis Cookies! Welcome in, welcome in. Ooh, you just did the breaker mission and didn't have a smoke bomb. Didn't think about it. Um, if you want to kill the breaker with a smoke bomb, do you also have the executioner skill from the melee tree? Uh, that's, I mean, a smoke bomb will still help. It will stun him and allow you to put shots on target while he's stunned. Uh, but if you have the executioner skill, well, then you can do a stealth melee kill on him. Yeah, yeah, I see you there, uh, Ian. Absolutely. Uh, Thomas, that is a great question. Melee is actually the best way to kill breakers and reachers. Now, that I know that may sound weird coming from me because I generally use firearms for pretty much everything in the game. In fact, I've always said if you, if you have to use a melee weapon, you have already fucked up and lost control of the battlefield. And now it's time to use a crowd control device like a flashbang or a smoke bomb to create distance and regain control of the battlefield. That's my own personal opinion. That's how I look at it. If I end up having to use a melee weapon on an enemy, it's because I fucked up and lost control of the battlefield somehow. However, the caveat there is your melee, your melee vulnerable enemies are breakers and reachers it's really one of the best ways especially if you have the one that's on deacon's back here the uh superior metal axe uh let me see if i can highlight the name of it yeah the superior metal axe but this can only be picked up late game uh but once you get to the late part of the game you can pick these up all over the map there's tons of them uh and uh if you also have like your melee skill tree uh leveled up where you have what is it like um Talk shit, get hit, which gives you longer combos. 
uh, hard hitter, which is the one that increases damage uh, for melee and, or I'm sorry, for crafted and found melee weapons. And there's another one. I don't even, uh, I think it's this one here. Home run uh, also increases the damage of both your crafted and your found weapons. If you have these skills, uh, Deacon is just a beast with melee weapons. And it is actually the best way to take out the breakers and the reachers, specifically the reachers with this weapon. It swings fast enough that you can kind of stun lock them. You hit them once and they're kind of stunned, let you hit them again and they're stunned and you hit them again and they're stunned and you hit them again and they're kind of stun locked until you get the kill. Uh, especially if you have the longer, whatever the one we just showed that gives you uh, longer combos uh, with the melee weapons. <clears throat> All right, so. Oh, I need to change uh, guns. Let's change up guns. Now, we ran the uh, RPD for a while, and I actually really do like that. That was a lot of fun. I, I never really ran it all that much because I generally have either the MG45 or the MG55 uh, for horde killing. I'm going to go to the 45 for a little while. I just love this thing. Okay, then. This is one of my favorite weapons in the game. Really, I think the auto shotgun and the MG45 are my two favorite weapons in the game. Um... And they're not necessarily the best uh, weapons in the game. They're certainly not the best for all situations, obviously. They're just my favorite. There, you are looking fine today. Wait a minute. Yep. Didn't I just use the saddlebags? Did I not just use the saddlebag? I guess not. Okay. Oh, it, weapons. Uh, weapons are cool. Anyway. Oh, Mega Man! Mega Man the Blue Lion! Welcome in, welcome in. Yeah, I agree, James. Uh, the melee weapons do wear out pretty quickly. Now, you also have the skill, uh, what is it here? Field repairs, the ability to repair your melee weapons with scrap, but also, rather than using that, the weapons that you pick up in the world, for example, the machete, uh, the superior metal axe, any of the weapons that you pick up in the world, they respawn all over the place. Once you learn a few of the spots where you can pick them up, they will respawn there indefinitely. Uh, so if you're using my hidden loot location video uh, where I show how to force a respawn of the loot in the world, if you're using that, you can force a respawn of the melee items as well, all the melee weapons. So you really never have to use scrap to repair a weapon. You just go pick one up once you find some of the locations where they spawn. <laughs> Thomas in with the numbers. Uh, I can help you adjust your numbers, though. Um, actually, for me to do a playthrough, uh, I'm a bit of a completionist. I would estimate that each playthrough is about 100 hours. Uh, I, I don't ever finish this game in 30 to 40 hours. That is not at all an accurate estimate uh, for my playthroughs. Uh, I would estimate 60 to 100 uh, for each individual playthrough. Uh, and let's call it a hundred just to have a nice round number. <laughs> Cap, <laughs> like, dude, I don't even know what that skill does, man. <laughs> does anyone know how it works? Uh, so what he's talking about, shit, if I can even find it here. Um, uh, what are we talking about? Which one is it? Vicious cycle. Is that a melee? That's not a melee. It's a range skill, isn't it? Vicious cycle. So what this says is, it is the ability to follow a melee, melee attack with a ranged attack for massive damage. So I would guess what it does is uh, if you smack with a melee weapon, then you can immediately deploy your, your ranged weapon and do increased damage with that next shot from the ranged weapon. I've never tested it. I... We might be able to test it on something like a breaker or a rager, uh, something that has a uh, really high health pull. The problem is that you don't have like a, a health meter showing you how much damage you've dealt. I guess I just thought of a way to test it. One way to test it would be the boss battle enemies. For example, when you fight your first bear, you'll have a health bar for that first bear. The first Breaker, first Rager, I think even the first Reacher, all of those, the first time you encounter them, they will have a health bar 
for that specific enemy. So if someone is really interested in testing that, there you go. Uh, that's a way to have a health meter for one individual enemy where you can compare, okay, we just did a single firearm, a ranged weapon shot on the enemy. It did this much damage. Now let's compare. We're using vicious cycle to follow a melee attack with a ranged attack. That might actually do it. Uh, I, I don't really know that I'm interested enough in the skill to do that. We may get around to doing it just for fun, but anyone who's curious, there you go. There's your method for how to test that. And shit, let us know. Post it on the Days Gone subreddit. What are we? I see the comment there about uh, Violet says you found something. Just happened to notice one of your recent playthroughs. Uh, I don't know. Fun fact I noticed in the game. Before you get the puppy for Boozer, the doghouse is beside Blair's puppy sh or supply shack. After you, yeah, it, moves. it actually moves. Yep. No shit. You didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, huh. it's, by the, it's by Blair. <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah, that is cool. I never noticed that. Huh. I mean, it's not a pickup item or something we can do damage with, so I probably never really looked at it you know and hmm. that's cool though that is cool touch i guess uh since blair sells supplies for the camp she sold deacon and boozer a doghouse for the puppy or let them have it or something traded it to them for something that is killer killer cool man okay so i have a little bit more time let's get out and do some damage with the mg45 i love this gun it's one of my favorites in the game Let's do another horde that comes at you fairly straightforward. These guys. They're basically all clustered up in a cave and come at you from pretty much one direction. I got this. Tripwire on the road. Good to go there. Legendary OG Boy 805. What's up, Legendary OG Boy? How you doing? Welcome in. Okay, so what I wanted to do is uh, find this horde at their cave, and I want to pull them out, and, and we're basically just going to show the smoke bombs again, where we have them clustered up at a, a nice little tight choke point. Oh, Ryan, yeah, you're very early in the game, so you, uh, you might, you'll probably be coming up on your bear boss battle pretty soon. Yeah, I'm, well... The only way you could test it is if you have that skill, though. So you would have to unlock the uh, Vicious Cycle skill. Yeah, Thomas, you'll try it when you get to the bear. And see if you have a save. Okay, yeah, cool, man. I'm curious, you know. I, I, like I say, I've never tested it. I just don't use melee all that much. So let's get them grouped up at the opening of the cave, and then we'll also use a smoke bomb. Here we go. They'll come and they'll run at the uh, tractor. Ideally. Okay. I'm going to put a smoke bomb on them, and then open fire. And that smoke bomb... Oh, shit. Here we go. This and we're gonna use another smoke bomb as they come around it here. Right here. Right there. 
Let's get where we can see them. You can actually see them frozen in the smoke bomb. There. And as the others approach, coming around the corner, they walk into the smoke bomb and then get stunned as well. Some of them. Glad I saw that. Okay. So yeah, that's just one of those things. Uh, I like to use that to... It's a crowd control tool. It's just crowd control. So let's kite them around, get them grouped up a little bit, and I'll show you something else. Uh, hopefully it'll work this time. Uh, I'm going to lead them back over to the bike. Earlier we were talking about trying... Oh shit, there we go. I'm about to get pooped. Uh, anyway, uh, we were talking earlier about uh, dropping a Molotov on yourself to uh, get the horde off of you, which is brilliant. I never thought of that. What I'm going to do is put one on the... Check this out. I'm going to lead them into this smoke bomb at the bike and use that to give me the opening I need to get on the bike and make my escape. So the smoke bombs are just such a powerful crowd control tool. Do not underestimate the value of the smoke bombs. Estimate the SMP9 either. Woo, woo. Easy enough. Done deal. Ah, it looks like we need to say hello to Dan Demand. What's up, Dan Demand? How you doing? Just beat the game and all the hordes with the Nero ending. So good. Yeah, man. So now you can reset the hordes if you want to and try out some of these tactics that we're showing. And have I missed saying hello to anyone else? Is there anybody that we didn't say hi to? You know, Cap, that's a good point. I, I'm glad you mentioned that right here. Uh, oh, Sh Hasib, hello and welcome. Hasib has gifted five Sponicus Rex channel memberships. Five lucky folks just became Sponicus Rex members for one month. Scott, Boo Boo, the last Boy Scout, Violent Jones, Legendary O. Legendary OG Boy 805 and Ian L were all gifted memberships. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. And that's one of those little things that, like, it helps the channel, uh, monetarily speaking, but it also helps the community, too, because it, it gives you guys little features that I can't offer any other way. Uh, you now have the, uh, the cool little icons out beside your name there, uh, little flare icons. Those were designed by 8-Bit Terror herself, host of the Days Gone podcast. Uh, that gives you access to the emojis like Ian has just shared. Yeah, good job, Ian. Thanks, man, for putting that in there. Uh, you have custom emojis, again, uh, created by 8-Bit Terror, host of the Days Gone podcast. Uh, so, yeah, it's just little community interaction things. I can't offer those features any other ways. We have other ways to join as a member. We have a Patreon account. We have a Buy Me a Coffee account. And then we have memberships here through uh, YouTube as well. But the YouTube memberships are the only one that offer those features. Too cool, man. Uh, all right, but Cap, you mentioned not wanting to use smoke bombs because uh, they're kind of expensive. They use both gunpowder and cans. And I agree. I agree 100%. But... If you are using my hidden loot locations video, there is no reason to ever be short on smoke bombs. I will show you right here, right here by this horde is Sherman's Camp. And Sherman's Camp is one of the few locations in the game where you can pick up two smoke bombs in one go. Now there's a horde here, so we're gonna have to deal with this horde, but you know, no worries. That's kind of what we're doing tonight. I actually have a plan for how I want to do this horde. So we'll clear this horde real quick, and I'll show you exactly where you can pick up two smoke bombs. We're going to have to kill that nude, aren't we? It is funny. The newts are supposed to be like scavengers who are scared of everything. Oh, man. I really wanted to shoot it off of that ledge. Anyway, the newts are supposed to be scared of everything, but once they aggro on you, they will follow you forever. Okay, so I like to use this spot right here for this horde. Actually, they're clustered up enough. We'll start with an attractor bomb. Get them gathered up. 
Put some grenades in there with them. There's a lot of them, more than I thought. clearing this horde, and I'll show you where you can pick up some more smoke bombs. Ready to use, fully crafted, ready to use smoke bombs. Check it out. Right here in Sherman's camp. And, and look at the map. I mean, right up here is where we just killed the uh, Riverflow Farms horde, the one that we used several smoke bombs, uh, used a smoke bomb to get away from them even. So they're right there. And then right around the corner over here in Sherman's camp, behind this building, uh, are two smoke bombs you can pick up right there in the world. Fully crafted, ready to be used. So you come up here to... Middle Mist Books. Used and new books. And you hop over the rail right here. Behind the sign for Dos Habaneros Authentic Mexican Cuisine... Right here behind the sign, you have two smoke bombs, fully crafted, ready to be used, no need to even bother scavenging for cans and gunpowder. Uh, there are other locations throughout the world. I, I know there's at least one more location in Iron Butte where you can pick up smoke bombs. So that's like three that you can get at a time. And if you force a, a respawn by resting, you can refill your smoke bombs in two goes. You know, just one respawn, and you'll have full uh, smoke bombs. Hmm. Need to say hello to the Who Fan One. Who Fan, welcome in. Welcome in. How you doing, man? And uh, is there anybody else that? I oh, Dandy Denny 07 is lurking. Dandy Denny, welcome in. Hello, ma'am. Good to see you with us. Uh, and oh shit, uh, Miranda Saturn as well. Did I miss saying hi to Miranda Saturn? Yeah, she's cooking while she's watching. Okay. Welcome in, guys. Good to have y'all with us tonight. <laughs> it is ironic that the smoke bombs are located behind a sign for a Mexican food restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, since we're talking hidden loot locations, right here in the same town, uh, it's right, um, you have to go through this doorway. Sometimes there's smoke bombs in here. Or, I'm sorry, I mean to say sometimes there are bear traps in here, so look out for those. Uh, but yeah, you go in here, find this red ladder right here. You just climb the ladder, and you have some other items up here as well. Uh, there's a bit of scrap for crafting, but then you also have both an attractor bomb and a flashbang right up here. And remember I showed earlier you can use those flashbangs to help get the enemies grouped up. Uh, you can basically use it as a noisemaker to pull them out of caves and get them grouped up and stuff. And they're right here, fully crafted, ready to be picked up, ready to be used. Oh, that's going to hurt. I actually didn't, did not hurt all that bad. So yeah, there's there's really no reason, it, especially if you are out killing hordes and you intend to go out and kill a buttload of hordes, don't worry about using your resources. Don't worry about how much crafting materials it takes to craft more uh, smoke bombs. You don't need cans and gunpowder. All you need to do is hit the hidden loot locations. And they're right there, fully crafted, ready to be used. Okay, so we've run the RPD and we've run the MG45. Let me again load that late game save. And uh, so we have pretty much full items and we're gonna switch out to the MG55 and we'll close this out with a bang. Hmm, Thomas, okay, you have actually tested it. I, did you record it so you can share it on the subreddit? Uh, Ian, yeah. We're on our Discord. Share it on our Discord. Fuck yeah, do that first. Uh, we have a Days Gone channel on our Discord. Ah, uh, so, uh, yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, share it on the Discord. Thanks, bud. If you recorded it. Put the photos. Okay. Yeah, make sure you share them on the Discord as well, please. Deacon. 
Good to see you. Blair, you are looking fine today. All right, so we're going to switch over to the MG55. Now, the cool thing about the 5.5, five, or I guess the difficult thing about the 5.5, five, is you can only unlock it. Sorry, I'm mashing all the buttons. With the Horde Killer storyline, you have to hit 60% in order to unlock the MG55. And then, uh, God, what is it like? Be safe. Yeah, what is the per percentage at which you unlock the extended magazine for this weapon? It's like 85 or some shit. Yeah, it's really stupid high. So you can get, what's interesting, you can actually get the MG55, the biggest machine gun in the base game. You can actually have it unlocked before you even do the first story mission horde. If you are killing every horde as they become available in the story, uh, then you can actually have this weapon unlocked. You can hit 60% before you even do the first story mission horde. So you can go into that first horde with Corey uh, and roll up in there with an MG-55, the biggest machine gun in the game. I'm trying to decide how I want to pronounce your username. I'm going to call you Mist. Mist, welcome in. Man, this game needed a sequel so bad. Does it though? Is it is it not even more special as a standalone? A sequel would be nice. I think it shines even brighter as a standalone, honestly. Um I don't necessarily want to see it become a franchise. Unless they actually do it right. But time will tell. Holy shit, check it out. James Guan stepping in with that highlighted member chat. Channel member for 11 months, dude. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that ongoing support, man. Really. Oh, damn. And James wants to say, hello, everyone. Look at me badge. <laughs> I almost read that as look at me badge. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, uh, let me see. Ade, Ade Coco. Hi. Good to see you again. Welcome in and good luck for this run. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I may need it. We're about to go do the sawmill. Let's see how it does. Uh, James Smith asking a very good quest there, a very good question there, rather. Uh, and let's have a look, shall we? Hey, Deke. How you been? Let's Where? equip the MG45. So I'll show you the stats, the hard stats on it, and then I'll give you my opinion. So what we can see here, the MG55 has better damage, better accuracy, better rate of fire, better stopping power, and a larger magazine size. Now for me, really it's all about the magazine size and the reserve ammo capacity. Check this out. We're currently holding the MG45 in our hand. Uh, so if you look at the ammo, now again, this assumes that you have the maxed out, the magazine upgrade, you know, if you purchase the MG45 at level 3 from Tucker's Camp, you can also purchase an extended magazine for it. That puts it up to 95 rounds in the magazine, uh, and the if you have the skill up the ante, which doubles your reserve ammo capacity, that brings the reserve ammo capacity up to 275. So we have 95 and 275. Now, let's take a look at the MG55, assuming the same stats, assuming you have the extended magazine and you have the skill up the ante. With it, you get 115 rounds in the magazine. That's 115 rounds before you have to reload again. And the reserve capacity of 375. That's almost another full magazine. Um just crazy high ammo capacity this allows you to run around mowing down the hordes all day long before you run out of ammo you can literally kill pretty much every horde in the cascades i would say every single horde in the cascades you could just go mow them down with the mg55 before you need to reload uh, you could do it all in one go uh, before you need to hit the saddlebags to get another full use of 115 and 375 for me, that's the kicker. It's the ammo capacity. Uh, but also, the 
another really key difference is in the recoil with the mg45 i'll just demonstrate briefly with the mg45 when you're firing it in full auto it is jumping around all over the place and you've got a lot of muzzle rise on it so it, it can be difficult to keep shots on target with the mg55 it's very steady it's ta -ta 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 pretty much on target with very little muzzle rise uh, so that's another key difference. Uh, I would say the ammo capacity and the recoil mitigation uh, are the two best things about the MG55 versus the 45. So I hope that helps. <laughs> All right, thanks, Thomas. I, I really appreciate that, man. I, I love seeing stuff like that from the community where folks are testing stuff and sharing the results with the community. I, you know, that's one of the main reasons I started making videos was to create useful tools for the community. Folks who are struggling with the hordes, I made a bunch of horde killing videos. Folks that are struggling with the early game, I made a video showing you how to be a badass just a few hours in. It's, I love that stuff. I really appreciate it. That's what we're all about, man. That's what we do here. That's what started the whole thing. Just trying to help folks out. Some folks don't see it that way. It's kind of not my problem anymore. All right. The sawmill. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Thank you for queuing up the music. <laughs> And this is another one. There's a billion and one ways to do this. Uh, many of you will have already seen my, my kind of standardized method for doing the sawmill horde. Um, where we set a bunch of traps, lead the horde through the traps, and make them pay for every fucking step that they take. I think we're going to do that tonight. Cause, well, yeah. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Because I just love doing it that way. Hey, man, that should have been a headshot. Ooh. All right, so I think I, I should have, like, my inventories maxed out. Yeah, we've got everything we need. Uh, and I actually haven't done this this way in a really long time. Uh, so I'm probably going to fuck up and put bombs in the wrong spot. But that's okay. That's the thing is, like, you don't, you don't need, you don't necessarily need a plan, really. Once you learn the tactics that work, you can just keep running circles around the sawmill using all of the different elements. Oh, I can show you some of it briefly here in photo mode. Uh, so you have like off to, well, kind of center screen now, you have the, the stacks of logs with the, uh, the orange uh, cargo ties around them, uh, the ratchet straps around them. You can place bombs on those, uh, even remote bombs, so you can set them off precisely. And those will roll out and trip the freakers up and give you like a, a point where you can where you can do some uh, killing uh, pretty easily. And then you have like these little other paths that you can lead them through uh, off to this side over here on the on the far side of that barn building back there. You have a bunch of traps over there that you can use. And you can't really see it from here, just barely like center screen back there. There's a little wooden bridge way back on the far side this way where you can uh, <clears throat> lead them down a little wooden bridge there. There's dozens and dozens of different paths that you can take them through. So even if you fail to prepare, you don't have a plan, just keep moving. Just keep moving and keep dealing damage. So even if we fuck this up, that's basically what we're going to do. But I'm going to show it the way that I would normally do it as close as I can get. It's been a long time since I've done it this way. I generally start the bigger horde fights by setting up kill zones. We'll set up specific points where I know there are choke points that I intend to lead the horde through. And I tend to do this before the fight even starts. Again, like I mentioned earlier, we want to put the bike in a good position where we can get away quickly and easily if we need to. There's going to be freaks in here. Hang on. No? No? We're sh Usually when you have the corpses here in the tunnel, there's a freaker standing here waiting to ambush you. That is very odd. 
I don't know that I've seen it spawn that way before. It's crazy how you still see shit different than what you're used to. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to park the bike, point it away from the horde, in a position where we can get to it if we need to. We can run up here and grab the saddlebags to refill our ammo if we need to, or we can uh, use it like, again, we have it pointed away from the horde so we can use it to make a quick getaway if we need to. And what I'm going to do, you'll see me setting these up in a very specific pattern. I like to space them out. I generally put them at points where the path narrows naturally, like right here. You have this box here and this like door that's leaning on its side here. If you put one of your bombs right there, you have a natural choke point here. You have a point where these two obstacles force the path to narrow. So I'll put one there. We'll put another one here. This isn't as good of an example because you only have like these barrels off to the side. But still, it's a it's a point where the path narrows. Another one right here. And then I'll put one uh, closer to the mouth of the tunnel here. Now, you'll notice I have them spaced out quite a lot. These, these bombs right here, they are not there to deal with damage. I remember when I first made my, my Sawmill Horde tutorial video, I actually had people criticizing the video in the comments because they're like, well, you space those bombs out too far. You're not doing enough damage with those bombs. That is not the point. The point is to create distance. I will be using firepower from the, from the heavy guns and other tactics to deal damage. All I want these bombs here for right now is to create distance, making space between myself and the horde, buying me time to fall back, reload, and renew my assault. You'll see it here in a moment. I'll demonstrate. Let's go ahead and set up the rest of the bombs. Now, in these more wide open spots here, I like to use the proximity mines because they have a larger blast radius. I'll set one here. Here, between these two silos, again, you have a natural choke point there. And over here, you have another choke point uh, between this concrete slab and these uh, logs here. I like to put another one. Again, we're just taking advantage of choke points that already exist. One about right here. And that should do it. Uh, now, I realize I've just, I have made a mistake. I tend to do this one at night. Uh, I like to do this at night because the horde will be down there in their feeding pit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a save game uh, just so we don't mess anything up in the meantime. Because uh, these bombs will still be here uh, if we go rest and come back. And hopefully we won't have any random wolves or anything blow them up. So I am going to make a save right now. We've got everything set up where I want it. Ah, Thomas, I have an answer for that, and you'll see it soon. I see your comment there about them uh, doing coming at you from different, coming in in two waves and coming from different directions no matter what you do. That is when we get into using the terrain itself to control the movement of the horde. Hopefully I can demonstrate that without screwing it up. I like to leave the bike in a position where I can get away quickly and easily. Pretty much any time I park the bike, I, if I'm really thinking about it, I try to do that. I was going to grab that gas can, but we just don't need it right now. We're not worried about fuel. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rest and make it nighttime. Uh, that should spawn the horde in at their little uh, feeding ground down there. And we'll show you, show you how I like to do this. Hmm. Andrew, yeah, you use the Nero checkpoint for this horde. And that's what I was saying earlier is there's dozens and dozens of different ways to do this. There's really no right way or wrong way. There's the way that worked for you. Oh, yeah, shit. Violet you used to skip this horde. God, I forget you can even do that. I legit, legit 
forget that you can even do that. I, I don't think I've ever skipped one of the hordes. I will be entirely honest. My first playthrough, the first story mission horde, the uh, the Kemult, the Kemult station horde that you do with Corey, I couldn't beat it my first time because uh, they drop you in with no warning, no opportunity to change your loadout or refill your ammo or anything like that. They just drop you into the fight. And uh, I had already killed at least a dozen hordes by that point. So I, I kind of felt like I had the hang of killing hordes. I could not do it that first time. I did actually have to reload an earlier save uh, and go in with uh, full gear and full ammo and stuff. Bigger guns and stuff. Okay. Our, oh, hello. Our bombs should still be exactly where we left them. Unless any random stragglers have set some of them off, which that could be a problem. But we'll just reload if we need to. And I'm going to show pretty much exactly what we did earlier. Bike in position. Yeah, all of our bombs are still here. Excellent. I do have freakers. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Rat bastard. Ah, oh, that's what I was talking about, though. Normally, when you have corpses in the tunnel here... There will be one random freaker. She's just kind of standing off to the side over here, just standing there waiting to ambush you. So no big deal, really. We, we still have plenty of these. I'm going to put another one right where it was. We, we haven't really lost anything. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and save my game, and we'll kick this off. All right, there's a save game. Uh, VA Gaming, that is a good question. Uh, if you kill the Horde, there are certain story mission Hordes that you can kill early. Uh, the Iron Butte Horde and the Sawmill Horde. If you kill them early, it does not hurt anything. Uh, just when you get there for the main story mission, uh, the cutscene will start automatically. You may have to clear a couple of stragglers, uh, but generally it'll just start the cutscene automatically. <laughs> I don't usually tend to die. Setting myself on fire helps. Is the horde even here this time? I don't hear them. I bet they've despawned. Rat bastards. Right as I'm trying to show something. Okay. Uh, loading the game should uh, pop them back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, viol violent. Now it's all just bring it on and blast them all to hell. Heck yeah. Alright, let's see if the horde has spawned in now. Yeah, same here, Hufan. It can be a bit touchy. There we go. Okay, they are here now. And all of our mines are still in position. There we go. We can see them headed out. And what they'll do is they'll go down there to the feeding pit. And once we get them all settled in for dinner, uh, then we'll start our ambush. Oh, Lance. Yeah, I'm sorry, Lance. I, I did miss saying hi to you. Hey, bud. How are you? Let me go back up a ways. <laughs> yeah, Lance, you were watching Claire's stream, had a blast on that. Now it's my turn to be entertaining. Yeah, man. Welcome in, buddy. Okay, so we're just going to give them a little opportunity to get settled into dinner. <laughs> oh my god, that's a lot of freaks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes it is, Deacon. That's why we're here. I'm going to keep a low profile as best I can. I do want to begin the encounter from stealth. Certainly don't want to trigger the horde fight before you're ready. Okay, that should be all of them. I should be in position now. No. Oh. Another thing I like to do, we were talking about using photo mode earlier. I'm going to pop into photo mode, max out that field of view, 
bring up the camera. And oh my God, that's a lot of freaks. Look at that shit. Good Lord. But this also gives you an idea of where they are positioned at. Gordy, Gordy Link, welcome in, man. Nah, dude, you're right here. You're right on time. Right on time for the sawmill horde, bud. Okay, now, I personally do not use attractors at this fight. Uh, I, I've seen people recommend it, uh, and they do work well for other encounters. I don't like to use attractors here because it it alerts the horde and gets them looking for action before you start dealing damage. In this specific encounter, we already have them grouped up. You don't need to use an attractor to group them up. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to start with the biggest damage that I have. I like to do about four of them. And then I will also put some at the stairs here. Now you'll see that I'm not throwing it directly at the freaks. What I'm doing is I'm creating a path of fire that they have to run through. The ones that tried to follow me that way have taken damage. They're all taking damage from my mines. Now we're going to approach this tunnel where I have placed a shitload of bombs. I'm going to go ahead and use a stamina cocktail and a focus cocktail. Don't really need the stamina cocktail, but they're still nice to have. Now watch what happens as these bombs start going off. Right there, that just made a huge gap for me. We have more enemies coming in. Now I have time to reload. Right? Those bombs create distance. They give me plenty of breathing room. Now we're going to lay down some heavy suppressing fire. We're going to keep them back as best we can. And when I get ready to reload again, see, they've already turned around and fucked off. Check that out. We get them clustered up and we create distance using those explosives. And I'm going to give them a minute to get back down there and get grouped up again. It's all about patience and planning. I don't mind that I need to wait a minute for them to get grouped up again. It doesn't bother me. We have all night, as it were. Now, while they are headed back down there to get grouped up, I'm going to go ahead and place a few more bombs. If you are using the hidden loot locations, you will have plenty of this shit. And with this technically being the biggest and the uh, last of the big hordes in the game, the last major horde, why not use your stuff? I mean, what else are you going to do with it? Put another one somewhere near the mouth of the tunnel there. Put another one at this choke point. I really don't even need one, but we'll put one here at this choke point too, just for fun. Okay. Now, again, I have the bike parked nearby so that I can run to it and hit my saddlebags. And what we're going to do is we're going to force each wave, the first wave and the second wave, we're going to force them to come at us from a direction of our choosing where we can bottleneck them all in one nice tight spot. Let's say hello to Chris. Welcome in, Chris Lattimore. Uh, Chris says, hello. I just started playing Days Gone a few weeks ago, and man, I don't know. It took so long, but I'm glad I started. Your and Borislav's videos have helped me tremendously, and I greatly appreciate it. You are welcome, sir. That is exactly why we do it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you be setting off my bombs, dude. Pretty sure that was a random straggler. And I'm glad he didn't set off my other bomb there. The horde is coming at us again. Okay. Are they? Well, we may have one that is actually aggroed on us. Try to bring a suppressor when you come to the sawmill. You may need it. Okay, so we only had that one aggro. Cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up bombs in the same spot. 
you can look at the horde's health bar and you can see we've already taken out more than half of them these bombs here are pretty much overkill but again i'm not using them specifically oh that's in the wrong spot i'm not using them specifically to deal damage to the horde i'm using them to create distance to buy myself time to reload fall back and renew my assault not necessarily trying to deal damage with these it's nice if we kill some with them sure but that's not the intent we're using the mg55 to deal damage and of course the napalm molotovs too But yeah, what I was saying about throwing the napalm molotovs at the top of the stairs, we weren't throwing them at the freaks to deal damage to the freaks. The thing about the napalm molotovs, they make a spot of fire on the ground that will stay there and continue to burn. As enemies run through it, they get the, molot they get the napalm stuck to them and you will kill enemies that you didn't even hit directly. Okay, so we are going to, once again, start with Napalm Molotovs. Should be able to get about four in there before the horde starts moving. Some at the top of the stairs here. So you're creating a path that they, at the fire that they have to walk through just to get close to you. As they try to approach you, bombs start going off. Creating distance, buying you time to fall back, reload, renew your assault. Make a little noise so they know which direction to go. I believe we have screamers nearby, because that is a mini swarm uh, coming in from a, swimmer, a screamer, I would guess. Look at how much damage we've done to the horde. The horde itself is almost done for. In fact, those two right there are likely the uh, That one was the last one. There's no need to get overwhelmed here. Use your tools to create distance and buy yourself time. There's nothing to it, man. There's no reason to get overwhelmed here. The game gives you everything you need to control the battlefield. And that's what it's all about. Woo! Shit, that was fun. <laughs> all right, man. Uh, that's it for me for tonight. Uh, I really appreciate you guys for joining us this evening. Holy shit. Look at the numbers, man. We're at 63 right now. I, I kind of don't want to stop now. I think that's my highest number ever. I, I actually think that's my highest view count in any live stream ever. Holy shit, we just hit a record. And it's dropped to 60 now. Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Seriously, thank you for being here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, but yeah, th that's what it's all about, man. Uh, and if you want to see more of the more specific tips, um, check out the video that I have dropping on Monday. Uh, again, it's it's a massive video. It's one of the, one of the biggest projects I've ever done. Uh, it, three people, myself, 8-Bit Terror, and a member of the community, Stickman4131, who is actually a professional video editor. Uh, we hired him to give us a hand with it, give us some pointers. Um, uh, I think it was a great value because Claire learned a lot in that experience. So we, we both have learned a lot just from making that one video. And hopefully you guys can learn a lot from watching the video. Pretty much everything that I could think of that you would need to know to make horde killing look easy. It's all there. The video will be dropping Monday morning, uh, 11.30 a.m. Uh, Mountain Time. Just look for the notification. Make sure that you have uh, notifications turned on for the channel. Make sure you're subscribed, have notifications turned on, all that fun stuff. And uh, you'll get the notification when it pops Monday morning. Thank you so much for being here, guys. That's pretty much all I have to say. And I think... Uh, the rest of it speaks for itself. Good night, you guys. We'll see y'all next time.